I'm going to say this uh, uh, first before I talk about the game. Uh, you know, a couple things. One is uh, I want to give a thank you to the, to our, our fans, our students, our alumni that that uh, came to the game today. Uh, I know. Uh, uh, with the threat of the severe weather and the, and the move uh, of the kick from 2 o'clock uh, up to 11 a.m., um, th that's uh, a, a tough combination. And uh, I appreciate uh, uh, the people that are here today coming out and, and, and supporting uh, us, supporting us, and, and certainly uh, seeing our seniors' last last uh, game here in Houston. Uh, I also do want to make mention uh, uh, to uh, Tulsa and, and to um, our administrators. Here at the University of Houston in our conference, uh, a lot of a lot of things had to uh, go into place uh, to yesterday morning make the decision to to move the game up. It was certainly the right thing to do in terms of the uh, threat of severe weather, um, and we appreciate everybody uh, making the accommodations. I know Tulsa didn't arrive till uh, yesterday evening, didn't get to their hotel uh, really around six six thirty, and it was a quick quick turnaround for everybody. So uh, my thank you to. Um, everybody from the conference, our administration in Tulsa, and, and uh, to making this game go off uh, th this morning prior to the threat of, of the weather. Um, you know, we uh, when you look at this game, uh, it felt like we started extremely fast and we finished fast. And um, you know, throughout the course of the game, um, again had some uh, momentum swings, and, and, and certainly Tulsa made some plays along the way to uh, to get the ball in the end zone that uh, kept the game close. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we talk about it all the time, and I, th I was very proud of our offense and our our guys uh, on special teams for for not turning the football over. Again, that's uh, uh, that's huge when it comes to winning football games. And then our defense statistically was credited with uh, with three turnovers, um, and I was proud of them uh, getting the football back on those three occasions. Certainly, uh, uh, a couple at the end of the game uh, were were, uh, were pretty big. So, uh, you know, we were um, uh, you know you saw some young men uh, making plays out there. Uh, Kenneth Farrow uh, certainly had uh, one of his better games statistically uh, in his career here, four rushing touchdowns. I think his fourth career. Uh, game, uh, I'm sorry, fourth game this season of over 100 yards rushing, and then Stephen Dunbar. And, and uh, you know, I don't know if I get asked about Stephen. Uh, he's a true freshman. Uh, he's learned all four of our receiver positions, which uh, uh, not only is rare uh, for a veteran, but it's certainly uh, 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 rare for for a true freshman to be, be able to come in and, and learn all four. We had we gave him the opportunity to to start for us uh, today at Z. Demarcus Ayers um, was banged up coming out of our last game and and uh, didn't, didn't practice as much uh, over the last two weeks. So we gave Stephen an opportunity to start, and, and what he did today did not uh, did not surprise anyone in our program with the uh, seven catches for 150. Yards. So, uh, again, proud of the way we, we battled. And um, with that, I'll take questions. Coach, just talk about what Farrell can do. Uh, you were able to just ball, put the ball on the ground, get his hands, and just uh, have that point to turn it loose, and it pretty much opened up everything else. And it, and it did, and I agree with you. We rushed for uh, for uh, almost 250 yards, 246 yards, and and again, I think running the football uh, opened up some things uh, in the pass game, and, and it really did with play action. Stephen Dunbar on a number of his routes uh, that he caught on on, uh, on on a skinny post there um, were were because of play action of off of plays where we had handed the ball off, faked the handoff, and and either the safeties came up or certainly the linebackers did. We were able to to um, get uh, passing lanes. Um, out on the perimeter. Uh, so again, I think, I think running it opened up our, our uh, passing attack. And uh, you know, Kenneth and and Ryan Jackson, our offensive line had a lot to do with that. You know, we did have some um, uh, a couple negative plays in, in the running game, but uh, I think we battled through that. And, and, and at the end of the day, it was uh, it was a very, in my mind, it was very consistent. Uh, I thought um, uh, I thought going forward on the one the one yard line and getting not going forward, getting the ball in the end zone on those first two opening drives. Uh, which I believe were both uh, a fourth down uh, calls for us uh, was certainly critical. Gave us not only certainly seven t uh, seven points and fourteen points, but uh, I think uh, I think momentum early in the game and in, in, in confidence. Coming late, um, you know, young Dunbar breaks that tackle, uh, sets up what turned out to be the game where just that alertness and that kind of won't stop until he's that. You know, you go back to. Being a freshman and then learning all these positions, that so that looks like a veteran play to 
kind of not watch the play in there, but still fight for that. So I, I agree with you. And, and I'm going I'm to say this about Stephen Dunbar, and, and uh, just because we're talking about him. I mean, if if you, if if uh, uh, if somebody not familiar with our program came and watched one of our practices, you'd think Stephen Dunbar is a veteran. The way the way he practices and and the way he attacks uh, meetings, the questions he asks, you know, it, it's the the familiarity obviously with your offense is is uh, is not very good for uh, an 18 year old that just comes into your program. So um, for him, in in literally, he's if if we have a young man go down. At any receiver position, he's the guy that bumps over, whether it's um, uh, Y, H, or X, and then he started at what we call Z today. So uh, his knowledge is outstanding. You know, and again, Joseph, you, you uh, um, I think you go back uh, to our last game, and and um, you know we're we're going uh, we're doing our two-minute drill, and he catches a ball and, and doesn't get out of bounds. So, but again, it's it's something where his knowledge of our offense is there, the way he practices and prepares, uh, he does it like a veteran. And then again, when you when you talk about an 18-year-old true freshman, there's some certain situations that they haven't been in at this level, and that was one of them two weeks ago. And, and uh, I would uh, uh, I would predict uh, for the next three years in our program, he won't he won't make that mistake again. And, and again, really proud of the way he uh, prepared and, and certainly the way he performed today. No, not 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 not. Uh, I wouldn't say. No one in our program ever said, "Hey, we got to we got to control the clock." And you know, we we start the second half, and and I believe Tulsa goes down on about on about an eight plus minute drive to uh, to start the second half and, and and score, and then we get the ball back. And again, if my memory serves me correctly, I think we go down in about one minute and score. Uh, and again, I think if uh, if I'm right, it was Farrell's 45 yard touchdown run. So. Um, you know, the thing we want to do is um, play to our strengths, move the football, move the chains, um, and, and see what the defense is going to is going to do. You know, um, uh, we've been running the ball well, uh, uh, you know, except for the previous game. But the, in, in, in the in the three games prior to to the two lane game, we had run the ball extremely well. We had to get back to doing that. I think it takes pressure off of everything, and it sets up uh, our offensive attack throwing it. So, um, you know, again, I'm not. Uh, did we want to run the football? Yes, but um, specifically, did we want to control the clock? No, no not in the, if we can. If we could score one-minute drives on 45-yard touchdown runs, we'll we'll take that every series. Well, it was when when you look at the second quarter, we uh, we drive the ball down the field. And I think we're second in uh, second in medium, and we try to throw a uh, a wheel route uh, off a of play action to the back of the backfield. They did a nice job, and they covered it. And um, and uh, Greg tried to extend the play and, and took a took a seven yard sack. So now after second and medium, we're we're, we're third and behind the chains, third and extra long, and we don't convert the first down. Uh, I think we converted uh, uh, seven or eight yards on the third down, but it, it got us, I think, to fourth and four, If again, if my memory is correct. So um, because we took the loss on second down, and, and there's no blame, at this, uh, I give them credit. We had, we had run a play earlier, uh, and it was there. It, sh it showed us on film. I mean, it showed us standing there uh, that uh, we felt like the throwback was there. They had a safety. Uh, come off a receiver, and, and Greg didn't feel like he could he could make the throw in there. But um, losing the seven yards there, and then picking up eight on third down, got us to fourth and four, so we had to punt. And then we got the ball back on the next series, and on third down we had a drop pass. So um, you know, with those drives stalled, one was a negative play, one was a drop pass, and 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 then I think we we uh, got back to getting positive yards. And you know, in, in football, it's uh, people don't realize. I, I hope people realize how critical turnovers are. But but uh, getting positive yards, and if you get to third down, making third and manageable, not third and then in seven plus, is is critical to keeping drives alive. And I felt like we ended up uh, getting back to that. Well, it's at this point, um, 
you know, I'm happy for uh, for our student athletes and certainly our seniors because we had we had we had 15 days left that we were guaranteed, and now we've extended our season, uh, so that's great for our student athletes and, and again our seniors. But at, at this point, uh, we've still got two games left of the regular season, so um, you know we could look up in two weeks and be anywhere from 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 six and six to eight and four. And so, uh, really, when you when you ask me. Uh, at this moment, what what comes to my mind now that we are bowl eligible? It's it's it goes back to to what I've said uh, probably not in a few months, but it is in my seventh year here overall in our program. Uh, the previous six years we've averaged playing ten true freshmen every year, and this year we're playing four. And uh, what that tells you is we're starting to get the the the, the depth that we feel like we need. And uh, by extending our season and, and playing into uh, you know somewhere in the end of December, early January, um, you're, you're, you get somewhere 15, 16, 17, 18 more practice opportunities for these young guys. And, and again, um, you know we'll do everything certainly we can to, to to be successful and win the bowl game. But it gives you a great opportunity to to for these veterans that have been through a long season, in, install game plans, work on the game plans, keep your timing down. Uh, in the passing game and on special teams and, and continue to, to uh, hone in on the fundamentals defensively. But then you can, and most programs do this nationally, then you can let the, the veterans go after an hour and 15 or hour and 30 minute practice and, and keep the guys that haven't played for you this season, whether they're, whether they're older guys that are backups on the depth chart or certainly the, the freshmen that were redshirted, and keep them out for another 30 to 45 minutes and, um, and get almost an extra set of spring practices in in the month of December. So as you go through a season, um, you know, the, the term we use in our program is scout teams. So the guys that don't play in games for us run the scout teams during the week. They, they're giving us the look of our opponents, offense, defense, and special teams. And, and the coaching um, in terms of the, the, the fundamentals, the technique, and certainly your schemes in those three phases is limited. So now you get into December and extend the season, you get a really, really great, uh, a great chance to, to uh, get back to working with the, uh, with the young guys in your program. And uh, repeat the second half one more time, will you? I'm just wondering if, if when you look at the, uh, maybe what's the obvious and what's maybe it's not, not so obvious in terms of what you're dealing with eventually, mm -hmm. is, is two weeks in a row, you know, with Duane and, and Tulsa giving up what they've given up, maybe not a, a fair assessment of, of what their whole body of work is just because, you know, they are playing with a little bit of a story. Right. No, I understand. Uh, in, in, uh, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's a fair assessment. Um, you know. And again, and, and I don't think. I don't think what you're asking me is, is unfair either. I mean, we've given up. Uh, again, if my math is right, 59 points defensively in the last two games, which is uncharacteristic of us. We were, uh, I think, a top. Uh, the top five uh, uh, defense nationally in scoring uh, going into our game uh, two games ago. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where we are now. And. Um, and um, but but uh, you know a number of things and and, and there's no uh, I, I hope people don't interpret me as an excuse guy I don't I, I certainly don't make excuses but when you lose uh, a young man of Derek Matthews caliber uh, you know for the last couple of years and certainly this season um, what I hear on the headsets quite often from Coach Gibbs or Coach Hargraves uh, in the first half of the season was great play by Derek great play by Derek. Um, and then since we lost Derek um, in the middle of our, uh, I believe it was our, our sixth game, so not even, not even the halfway point of the season, if I'm correct, um, you know, you, at times you're hearing some, some, uh, some, so some of the similar comments, but you're also hearing uh, uh, certainly a lot more, uh, you know, this guy fit that gap wrong, or this guy went um, uh, related to two instead of three, and, and it's a fast game, and, and you're looking out there right now, and and you see Matthew Adams, who's a true freshman, playing a lot of football for us now. Uh, Khalil Williams, again, I've, I've 
I've told you guys this. Um, you know, we were, we were trying to redshirt him, and next thing you know, with the injury to Lee Hightower, we got to we got to play Khalil, and he's on a bunch of special teams, and then and he's running out there and playing defense, and there's um, different personnel, motions, and, and formations, and, and he's got to know what to do. And uh, um, you know, and they're getting better every week. Howard Wilson's a young man. In high school, he was a linebacker. And he's a true freshman playing for us and got his third interception of the season today. Um, so, uh, again, I'm, I'm not uh, – I, I don't even know if I've answered your question. You know, in, in terms of the body of work of our defense, uh, I think I think it's been uncharacteristic of us giving up almost 60 points in the last two games. Um, but I think over the course of the year, I think uh, I think certainly people would agree with me that our defense has played extremely well.